Thank you everyone for joining our meeting today. Welcome back from lunch. I'm just waiting a minute or two for Ms. Sierra to join us. Um, she is part of the team for the next item on the agenda. Um, so I want to um, give her a chance to arrive before we get started. So thank you very much for your patience and we'll be with you shortly. Ms. Urban, uh, I don't see that um, Angela yes. Sierra is logged in right now. Um, I, we might want to send her a message that she needs to log back in. Okay, thank you, Ms. Hurtado. Um, Mr. Sultani, could you contact Ms. Sierra? Okay. Thank you. All right, I'm under, oh, yes, Ms. Elatori? No, 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 I didn't mean to interrupt. I thought we were, we had time and I had a question to ask. Um, all right, we are recording um, and broadcasting. So, uh, sure, go ahead. Oh, no, that's fine. Okay, um, I, so I understand that um, Ms. Sierra is having uh, technical issues, which hopefully will be addressed soon. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and begin the presentation for our subcommittee and just be sure to um, uh, ask if she has anything to add before, uh, before we move on. Um, thanks to everyone for joining us today. Um, welcome back from lunch. We will now move on to agenda item number nine, which is the last rulemaking advisory subcommittee report. And that's from the Update CCPA Rules Subcommittee, CCPA being the California Consumer Privacy Act of 2018, under which the Attorney General's Office has promulgated existing rules. Uh, so the subcommittee's job is to consider potential updates to those existing rules. And the subcommittee is composed of Ms. Sierra and myself. Um, we do have some slides, um, but they mostly serve as a reminder. Um, thank you, Ms. Hurtado. Um, Ms. Hurtado, if you wouldn't mind, you can just flip through um, to the next slide. And the next slide, please. Uh, so this is a reproduction of the 
a section of the slide deck that Ms. De La Torre and I presented on September 7th, uh, setting out topics assigned to the CCPA Rules Update Subcommittee. Um, I won't go through them in detail. Uh, we just um, created the presentation so people could refer to them if they would like. Um, but they include um, various things that either are um, uh, things that the agency needs to update in the existing rules or that clearly relate to the existing rules, like the right to correction, um, which didn't exist um, in the, uh, before the CPRA, but is, of course, procedurally likely quite related to um, the right to um, opt out or the right to um, uh, request deletion. So this, the list of things that um, we've already um, been, uh, been assigned. Uh, Ms. Hurtado, um, you can close the slide presentation now. Thank you very much. Um, so that's just as a reminder, and you can refer to it. Um, if it would be helpful to you, you could also refer to the presentation September 7th. Um, uh, our subcommittee uh, is also meeting weekly and working on topics throughout the week. Um, we have two things that we'd like to mention today. One is, um, as discussed in the September 7th meeting, each subcommittee uh, was looking into topics that they would like to request for informational hearings um, for the process subcommittee to consider. Ms. Sierra and I have identified two topics for informational hearings. The first is uh, fairly general. It's generally how the current rules, procedures for consumers uh, to um, to know, to opt out, to delete, and that kind of thing are operating uh, in the wild, to use a shorthand. Um, are they working for consumers? Are they working for businesses? Um, just so we can get a sense of how things are operating, that would help us understand um, potentially updates. So that's one topic, um, uh, a more general one. And then the second topic is a bit of a subset of that topic, um, which is a, a discussion about what is known as either the global privacy control or the opt-out preference signal. So those are the two topics that we've identified um, to ask the process subcommittee to look into adding to the informational hearings. And um, we can talk about those, of course, when we get into discussion. Uh, welcome, Ms. Sierra. Thank you. I've just, uh, I showed our assignment a little bit and I've, um, I've talked about the informational hearings. Uh, and now I'm going Great. to discuss, thank you. And now I'm just going to discuss the, um, the additional topics we noticed um, in our research. Um, so we have, as we've been working through, we've realized that there are likely um, some additional topics not yet assigned to us that involve potentially updating existing rules. Um, and so we've really just kind of begun comparing, but we did notice some things that are in the process of committees list that we think probably makes sense to include in our bucket. So we'd like to mention those, um, and we can either um, decide that we'll stick them in our bucket or the process subcommittee um, can consider them uh, and give us some advice in the next meeting. Um, but the first few that we noticed were um, the definition of business purposes, um, which relates to um, others of our topics around contractors and sub providers and there's an existing regulation, um, code, the uh, Code of Regulations, Title 11, Section 999.314C. So that seems to make sense um, for us to consider as well. Um, there are a couple of topics interrelated with notices and opt-outs and sharing and sales, which are inter intentionally interacts in dark patterns. Um, Again, this could be something to consider, um, but we wanted to flag that. And then third, there's the record keeping requirements, um, which is not currently uh, in the CCPA regulations at section 999.137. Um, we've noticed some potential other topics, um, and there may be things that aren't in the process subcommittee's list, such as, for example, um, the existing regulations defined household, but then the CPRA defines household in the statute itself. Um, and uh, so where that leaves us is that we wanted to mention this sort of first subset and highlight that we think there may be 
I don't think a massive number, but a small number of additional um, topics like this. And we're hoping to uh, understand how we in the process of committee should organize um, our, our work here. Um, so that is um, our report for the moment um, and the topics that we're hoping to have um, discussion on. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for um, listening. And um, I will ask first if Ms. Sierra has anything to add. No, I do not. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sierra. Um, comments or questions from board members? Ms. De La Torre? Thank you, Chair Irvin. I was just um, maybe hoping to have a little bit more clarity on, on how we collaborate as, as separate mm -hmm. <clears throat> subcommittees. It seems to me that these topics that have been identified were probably topics that are not mandatory topics for rulemaking, but based on your initial assessment, those are topics that if they would benefit from consideration by your subcommittee. Is that, is that what, is that the gist of what you're sharing with us? Yes, thank you, Ms. De La Torre. That is the gist. Um, my understanding is the process of committee um, is deciding whether things are necessary and whether to assign them. Um, and because this number of topics seem pretty closely related to what we were doing, the suggestion was that we would go ahead and consider those and see if and how they do integrate with, um, with what we're doing. So I suppose, I suppose we would, if we, if we just decided to, to go with that, to go ahead and take these on today, we would also need to consider whether it was mandatory. Um, uh, and the other option would be for the process subcommittee to consider and come back with to us on November 15th. I, I am gonna, um, I, you know, for background for the rest of the board, because Chairman Urban and myself were more um, closely involved in, in kind of separating the, the subcommittees. What we did at the time is we came to the conclusion that those topics that were not mandatory for rulemaking were not topics that we as a subcommittee could decide unilaterally that they had be they had to be um, part of this rulemaking process, and that's why we set them aside. Um, and I think that that is the same situation now. Right, uh, the the whole um, board will have to agree with assigning these topics to the CCPA uh, rules update subcommittee. It seems to me logical that if they are closely related and um, the subcommittee that's looking into that um, set of topics believes that they will benefit from consideration, um, we could perhaps motion to assign them even in this meeting just for, for the sake of making it expeditious. Um, Chairman Irvin, will that be the right process or will it be best for, it's just the first time that we're doing this. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm in favor of um, being expeditious and it seems to me that your subcommittee will have a much more in-depth understanding and if this um, is the conclusion that you both together have come to, I will fully support it as a member of the board. I don't, I don't know that there is a need for the process of committee to separately consider it and then bring it up to the board again in the next meeting, basically. Thank you, Ms. De La Torre. Um, I believe that would be an okay process. Um, our concern was that we didn't want to overlap um, without having a discussion and having the board decide where, where things would live. Um, and these were things that we um, have thought that we we're gonna sort of run into so that it would make sense. Um, so I think that would make sense. Um, unfortunately, we've lost Ms. Sierra again. I mean, I'm sorry, I apologize to be clear. Ms. De La Torre, I think your suggestion or your the option that you provided would make sense. Um, and a second step of this process could be that uh, the process subcommittee, um, if you have things that you do want to assign on November 15th, you could come with those. If the CPRA new rules subcommittee finds something that they think was not in their initial list, they could come with those. And uh, this subcommittee with Ms. Sierra and myself could come with any additional things we've noticed. Um, we just haven't had a chance to go through everything yet. So that 
I think that could make sense if everyone uh, is in agreement. And that way we are not accidentally stepping on each other's toes. Mr. Bruder? No objections. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bruder. Uh, we have lost Ms. Sierra again. Um, we, we still have a quorum. I rather hesitate to vote on something that affects her work as directly without her. Um, I, Mr. Bruder, would it be, a, well, let's just continue conversation for now um, and see um, if she's able to pop back on. And then if, um, if she's still missing, then we could, I think, maybe consider recalling this item um, to wait for her. Are there other topics, uh, other comments on Mr. Thompson? You're on mute, Mr. Thompson. Thank you. Um, can you hear me now? Okay. Um, your description was a very helpful clarification. Because um, I was conceiving of the work of the process subcommittee differently. And um, given that you and Ms. De La Torre were the ones who, who kind of conceived of the process subcommittee, um, I assume you knew what you meant when you when you put it together. Um, so just to take a step back, as constituted, is the thought that, and I think Ms. Sierra just rejoined, um, that the process subcommittee would examine these questions and then make a recommendation to other subcommittees for further action or deferral of action in those areas, which is different than I was thinking of it coming into the subcommittee. Um, I, that, that comports with my understanding, Ms. Sierra, or sorry, Ms. De La Torre. Um, right. I, the way I understand it is there's, in a way, two different mandates for the process of committee. One is just to help us make sure that we follow the process with the support of the um, executive director and the agency, and we keep the board updated on that. Uh, potentially looking to <clears throat> to improve this process for rulemaking for future um, rulemaking um, efforts that we might uh, undertake. Uh, but in terms of the specific items that were carved out to decide whether they had to be assigned or not. The, the reason why they were all um, placed under the uh, process of committee is because our understanding was that it was not a mandatory topic for rulemaking. And therefore, we felt as a subcommittee that it was not our place to assign them for rulemaking basically um, from the start. Um, so I, I think I'm kind of repeating back what both of you said and adding that there's a, kind of a different mandate as well. There's a very broad delegation for rulemaking in terms of um, what this um, agency can do. Um, and there's a catch-up provision at the end that says that we could issue rules on anything that is related and beneficial. So that opens the door for if you know there's any other area that is identified that might not be itemized in the list, it opens the door for the process subcommittee to present it to the board for consideration in this rulemaking effort or uh, towards the future as well. Thank you, Ms. Territory. That comports with my understanding, unsurprisingly. Um, and what happened here is just that we found ourselves running in to um, a few topics that seemed quite related to the existing rules. Um, welcome back, Ms. Sierra. Uh, would you like to comment? Yeah, I just wanted um, on a logistical issue, I'm having some um, connection issues. So if it's all right, I'm going to turn off my camera um, because that may help. But Thank I'll you, be here. Sierra. Um, and Ms. Hurtado, would Ms. Sierra be able to call in? Uh, I've, I've put the call-in information in uh, the in the backstage. Okay, thank you. Um, and Ms. Sierra, are you still with us? Yes, I am here. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, all right. Well, let's yeah, let's Without try. Calling. Let's try without your camera. Okay, great. Okay, wonderful. 
Um, so uh, if it's all, I know you've been in and out, Ms. Sierra, so um, uh, I'll, I'll try to summarize the conversation. Um, I presented those few topics that we had noticed um, and uh, suggested or requested that um, we have these put into our bucket so that we can work on them. Uh, we had a, a discussion about the process subcommittee's role. Ms. Zalatori explained that in the initial regulation subcommittee, uh, she and I identified um, uh, a series of topics that um, we weren't sure were mandatory that we gave to the process subcommittee to sort of dole out. Um, and Ms. Uh, De La Torre um, suggested that one way we could approach this would be a motion um, for, for the board to consider and then vote on um, as to whether to assign the topics identified to uh, our subcommittee, Ms. Sierra, the update rule subcommittee. I then uh, suggested that uh, we could also continue with this by having each subcommittee potentially bring topics to uh, our next meeting. The process subcommittee presumably would have topics they might want to assign, um, and other subcommittees might have run into something that they wanted to request. Uh, are there other comments from board members? Did I miss anything? Delatory? Yes, surely. I think that the gist of my comments were that we will, or I, I personally will support whatever is more expeditious. So if, if you feel both um, strongly that these are topics that you should be starting to work immediately on, as opposed to wait until the next meeting and a formal proposal from the process of committee, and maybe it's an, there's an opportunity here to make sure that that is enabled. If these mm -hmm. are topics that perhaps you're considering, but maybe um, you have enough other work to do between now and the next subcommittee meeting and it makes sense to um, have the process of committee formally propose it to the board that that uh, I will as well support. Uh, thank you, Ms. De La Torre. Uh, Ms. Sierra, do you have a um, thought on Ms. De La Torre's comment? Um, with respect to the well, if we can, for the four weeks, we can work on other matters. It seems to me that that, that would be fine. Um, as we do have a, a number of other topics to be working on. I think, uh, thank you, Ms. Sierra. I think um, the business purposes is really very connected to one of our topics. So that one mm. um, does seem uh, does seem a little bit that it would be more efficient. Um, uh, to use Ms. De La Torre's word. Um, the others, the record keeping requirements definitely exist, um, but yeah. I think it's really that first one on business purposes that would, yeah. would gain the most inefficiency. And then we could talk about the others in the next meeting. Yeah, I, that, that's a good point. I, that makes sense to me as well. Right. Thank you, Ms. Sierra. Any other comments from board members? I think that makes sense as a course of action. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, then, um, Mr. Bruder, uh, please forgive me. I still do ask, but I do still ask procedural questions once in a while. Um, so, should I formulate a motion first, or should we ask for public comment first? Should the public hear the motion? I know we should. We um, we would like to hear public comment before we take an action. I think it should be clear to the public what the discussion is, so I think you can uh, open for public comment now. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Bruder. Uh, thank you, board members. Uh, Ms. Hurtado, um, I would now like to request uh, any public comment. Just going to give them a, just a second to react. Of course, thank you. And there's no public comment at this time. Thank you very much, Ms. Hurtado. Uh, in that case, uh, may I have a motion to uh, transfer the business purposes topic to the extent that it was contained within the process subcommittee. 
uh, to the update rule, update DCPA rules subcommittee for further work. I'll move. Thank you, Ms. Sierra. May I have a second? Uh, I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Lay. Um, I have a motion and a second. Ms. Hurtado, could you please uh, perform the roll call vote? I will now call the roll. Uh, Ms. Dilatori? Aye. Mr. Lay? Aye. Ms. Sierra? Aye. Mr. Thompson? Aye. Ms. Urban? Aye. That was the end. They're all ayes. Thank you. Um, the motion has been approved by a vote of five to zero. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, that ends our uh, update DCPA rules subcommittee report, and we can move on to agenda item number 10. Agenda item number 10 is an update from the public awareness and guidance subcommittee. The public and awareness, excuse me, public awareness and guidance subcommittee was formed to advise the board on the agency's duties to promote public awareness and provide guidance to consumers and businesses as set out in civil code section 1798.19940 D through F. Um, the public awareness and guidance committee is made up of Mr. Lay and Mr. Thompson, and I will now turn it over to them. Uh, Mr. Thompson, should I, should I speak? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah, so not much to report. Uh, you know, our, our subcommittee is uh, working on recommendations for how to build public awareness of the informational hearings and the formal rulemaking. Um, hope to have something for the next board meeting. Uh, but, you know, we'd welcome board comments on, you know, how best to do that. You know, I think everyone else is, um, you know, promoting those opportunities as they arise within their own networks. But um, any comments on, or thoughts on how to, the agency should do that, um, as well as any other topics that um, our subcommittee should explore. Thank you, Mr. Lay. Would you like to start discussion? Oh yeah, so uh, feel free to uh, provide comment um, exactly or, or ask us any questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, comments from board members? And Ms. Sierra, I'm sorry, I can't see you, so you should feel free to just speak. We'll listen. Thank okay, you. Um, so, so I am, this is working, so I, I'll keep my camera off to the extent, but if I'm going to make a comment, I'll turn it on. Thank yes. you. Um, comments from board members to Mr. Lay and Mr. Thompson's presentation? Um, I have a question, uh, if, uh, which is, um, uh, I, I'm, it, it's, I think it's very important that uh, whatever the agency uh, produces in terms of rules um, and guidance uh, takes into account the needs of all California communities. Um, California is a very diverse state, and communities have a lot of, uh, have many needs. Um, and I'm wondering if the, um, if the public awareness um, and guidance subcommittee is thinking about um, outreach that might support uh, what we learn uh, so that, that would support our rulemaking or other endeavors um, or how you're sort of thinking about the um, how you're sort of thinking about that process and the reason I'm asking is because um, I hope that is something that is on the radar of the process subcommittee or the subcommittee and I realized I wasn't certain um, if anyone had kind of claimed that as a topic. Um, so just to, uh, oh, go ahead, Mr. Thompson. I was gonna say, um, you know, in my view, how we do outreach and the topics. So for example, making people aware of the invitation to comment on our rulemaking process, the, the awareness of the subcommittees, awareness of our activities falls within this subcommittee's jurisdiction. The topics for um, um, informational hearings, we were placing within the process subcommittee, but you know, I think that is, that, that's, that's one board member's opinion. Um, 
but that that was the bifurcation in my own mind how we how we would split the split the scope of work between the two subcommittees um but to your point uh it, there's going to be a, a, a range of activity that will have significant Im implications and impacts on consumers in the state and ensuring that that we as an agency are are effectively communicating both our activities and and their importance is i think squarely within this subcommittee's jurisdiction um I, hopefully that was responsive to what you were asking topically i think process subcommittee tactically um awareness subcommittee thank you mr thompson um and that is exactly what i was wondering about was the the tactic i suppose um a uh, process subcommittee um i uh, certainly um understood uh from my work with Ms. de la torre that the topic subject matter would be within that subcommittee and i what i was really asking about was out i guess outreach you know how we would reach people um Ms. de la torre um, I, oh, I had another me. point on that um right. to add Okay, I'm sorry, Mr. Lay, please. Yeah, to the tactics wise, you know, we, you know, we, we had definitely included in our, um, our earlier presentation, you know, thinking about, um, yeah, how to do outreach in, in other languages. Um, and, you know, that's, that remains to, you know, uh, uh, an area that we're going to make recommendations on. Um, so, you know, it's definitely on our radar, uh, at least to the extent that, yeah, we're worried, like, we're, we're interested in how do we get this opportunity out there. But beyond, you know, just in language, it's also how do we make it, so that there, the opportunities to participate make sense. You know, a lot of, a lot of these questions are, are pretty heavy, they're pretty technical. A lot of the folks that we want to get input from uh, don't, aren't, you know, we're doing a lot of the research on this stuff too. So uh, I think, you know, that'll be something that we, we think through is uh, what opportunities are there. And that's that's kind of what, you know, uh, I was hoping to get, you know, if, if any board members have thoughts either now or at the next, um, you know, board meeting is, how do we think through as a public agency making process more accessible? Um, yeah. Thank you, thank, thank you, Mr. Lay. I strongly align myself with that value set, and um, I think I, I'm really delighted to hear that the subcommittee is thinking about it. Um, I, I do have a couple of initial thoughts, um, but I think Ms. De La Torre had her hand up, so um, please go ahead, Ms. De La Torre, and I'll hold my thoughts. It's okay if you want to go first, uh, Mrs. Sherburn, either way. Thank you. Qu quite small. Um, my, my suggestion was um, maybe to uh, work with the executive director to see if there are other agencies who have either in-house expertise or contractual expertise um, for outreach and for um, messaging that reaches uh, a wide range of communities and makes um, things accessible. Uh, and allows for sort of the broadest possible input. That was that was my suggestion. Is hopefully there are experts uh, upon which we could draw. I, I'm afraid there. Mrs. Mrs. Urban stole my thunder a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> no, I was just going to suggest the same thing. Think about uh, forums where we might want to participate. That could be helpful. And I think because of the short staffing of the agency, we really do not have a. Uh, kind of public engagement function. Um, we rely on, on on support from others. So think about how we are going to communicate out to Californians. The fact that they have now new rights, uh, there's a lot of people who are not aware of that basic fact. Um, even the rights that exist under CCPA, much less the, the new ones under CPRA. So are there ways in which we should go about maybe upgrading our um, website to provide information for consumers on the rights that they have are there forums where we can engage with consumers as well as with organizations subject to the law to um, help them understand the new rights and obligations um, i um, also was going to suggest that do work closely with the new executive director as he builds up his um, communications team i think that would be a uh, clear um, intersection with the work of your subcommittee. Thank you, Ms. Delatore. You should have gone first after all. <laughs> um, any other comments or questions from the board? All right, thank you very much, Mr. Lay and Mr. Thompson, um, for working on this really important set of um, tasks. 
uh, would like to ask if there are any comments from the public. There are no comments at this time. Thank you very much, Ms. Hurtado. Um, thanks again uh, for your work on the subcommittee, Mr. Lay and Mr. Thompson, and thank you um, to the board for the discussion. We can now move on to agenda item number 11, uh, which is entitled Board and Agency Policies and Practices, Conflict of Interest Code. I will give a little bit of background, uh, both for people um, in the public who might not have joined us on our June 14th meeting and for the rest of the board, since we talked about this last in June. Um, we are required by law to have a conflict of interest code. Um, and I would like to turn everyone's attention to the agenda item number 11 materials for the meeting. Um, as a reminder, this conflict of interest code was considered by the board in our June 14th, 2021 meeting. Mr. Philip Laird provided the background at that time, um, but the short version is that we are required to have this in place. The version that we have is a sort of basic um, uh, template. Um, uh, Mr. Laird didn't want to use the word boilerplate, um, but it is, it is standard. Um, it is, and the way that the conflict of interest code is adopted is that we as a board can't just vote to adopt it. It's actually done as a regulation, but as a via a specific procedure. The first step was for the Fair Political Practices Commission to review the code, which it did before we considered it on June 14th, that was done. The second step was for the board to initially approve the code um, and allow it to go out for public comment. The board did do that on June 14th. Um, and then the third step was for the code to go out for public comment, which it did. Um, public comments closed uh, after our September 7th and 8th meeting on September 22nd. We received no public comments. And we are now at the final substantive step, which is for the board um, to consider uh, and approve the code so that it can take effect. Um, with the board's approval, Mr. Laird can complete the paperwork and submit it to the Fair Politics, excuse me, the, the code, to the Fair Political Practices Commission and the Office of Administrative Law, who then file it with the Secretary of State. Also, as a reminder, this is our initial code. Um, we can update it to include new positions. Uh, the Fair Political Practices Commission sets out, sends out a reminder biannually, um, but we can update it any time. It just, it requires the whole process again. Um, but there's also a second um, option, which is that um, in the meantime, in between, the executive director can um, excuse or modify it for certain positions. So, for example, you know, if somebody is answering the phones, it may not make sense for them to need to do um, the highest level of disclosure. So that is a little bit of background um, on the code. This is the exact same wording and code that we um, approved in. June, but we're at this stage where we could um, approve it and send it off to take effect. Are there any comments or questions from the board members? Okay, thank you. Um, are there any uh, comments, uh, uh, comments from, uh, excuse me, is there any public comment, comment from anyone in the audience? There are no comments at this time. Thank you very much, Ms. Hurtado. Um, in that case, may I have a motion to approve the conflict of interest code um, that we have in our materials for the meeting in order to uh, send it on to the Fair Political Practices Commission uh, and OAL so that it can take effect? I so move. Thank you, Ms. De La Torre. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. 
Um, I have a motion and a second to approve the conflict of interest code. Ms. Hurtado, would you please conduct the roll call vote? Uh, Ms. Delatore? Aye. Mr. Lay? Aye. Ms. Sierra? Aye. Mr. Thompson? Aye. Ms. Urban? Aye. That was five to zero. Thank you, Ms. Hurtado. The motion carries uh, with a vote of five to zero. And I will uh, ask Mr. Lair to complete the process. Thank you all very much um, for considering this and getting us this next step further down the road. Um, with that, we'll move on to agenda item number 12, discussion of a delegation of authority for the executive director. Um, as a reminder, um, section 1798.199.35 says that the agency board may delegate authority to the chairperson or executive director to act in the name of the agency between meetings of the agency, except with respect to resolution of enforcement actions and rulemaking authority. Um, the board has previously delegated day-to-day -day authority with some limits to the chairperson. Now, however, we have an executive director to whom we can delegate authority. Um, and um, accordingly, uh, you have a delegation of authority um, within, within the meeting materials. Um, I can put it up on the screen if you'd like, um, but I assume everyone has it. Um, they, uh, it's very similar to the delegation I've been operating under as a chairperson, um, but it does not include the carve out for the chief deputy director of administration. And it lasts for a year, which as I understand is a standard length of time for delegating authority to staff. Um, the uh, animating principle is that the, it allows the executive director to accomplish day-to-day um, -day tasks that are necessary to run, and in our case, um, to build up the agency. Uh, I will now open up and ask if there are questions or comments from board members. Oh, Ms. De La Torre, I'm sorry. I keep looking for that little icon. Please go ahead. This, yes. So are we, um, are we going to formulate an item and vote on this today? Is that, is that the plan? My delegation of authority has expired. So if we intend to move forward, yes. I um, generally agree with the delegation as drafted. However, in my opinion, for the board to properly exercise its authority and responsibility and oversight over the agency, I believe that the board should retain the ability to um, provide final approval for the executive leadership of the agency beyond only the um, Chief Privacy Auditor, which is the only position that is carved out by this um, draft. Um, is there a possibility for the board to consider that um, change? Thank you, Ms. De La Torre. Um, I think we should return to your question after we hear further comments. Um, it is a board decision. I just uh, you want to clarify. So it's either to do that or to delegate uh, full, full authority. Are those the options, or just to, we'd have to make a motion, uh, a motion anyways, as your your delegation of power has ended, right? My delegation was from meeting to meeting, so mine. Yeah. So what's the default status now that it's that it's uh, expired? Um, uh, yeah, and we could parse whether at the end of the meeting, the beginning of the meeting, or what. But uh, the the power is held collectively in the board, um, so that's we would, I suppose, just keep meeting to decide everything. Yeah. Well, I I believe there are administrative and ministerial things that are um, small. Um, Mr. Bruder, uh, would you uh, could you correct me if I've missed anything there? 
Yeah, I think uh, without renewing your authority or, or delegating that sort of general power to, to the executive director, I, I think the executive director's powers are very uh, limited. Uh, I don't know that I can articulate the limits of, of, of that authority, but, uh, uh, it, you know, if you think about a ministerial day-to-day -day duty, what, what does that really mean? Does that, does that include, uh, you know, uh, contracting for internet services in, in an office, uh, you, you know, maybe not. Uh, so I think, uh, uh, I, I think there is an administrative burden and not proceeding with some sort of delegation. Thank you, Mr. Bruder. Um, Ms. Hira? Um, yes, so I, in my view on this um, is that the delegation as we has has been proposed so far um, in our materials, it does strike the right balance in my view, um, because we have as a board, you know, exerted our uh, authority in appointing an executive director, and um, and our statute does um, require that we're also um, in appointing power or decision making body for the chief privacy audit, auditor position. Um, but at the same time, in my view, really the right balance, and especially we're in a dynamic situation and a lot is happening and evolving, um, to provide our executive director with the authority um, that he will need um, to be able to really function and, and build up this, our agency, you know, as quickly as possible and you know there are a lot of decisions but I think are making the main decision here in appointing an executive director is our way and we have you know authority and use our authority in that respect. So uh, my understanding is this would be a customary balance of, um, of the authorities for um, boards and I'm very comfortable with this and I think that it would work well for us and I think um, as you know already all of us having worked um, on our subcommittees with the executive director that um, you know he's very communicative and I think that um, we will be having a very good um, one on um, communications with him so in any event I, I just think this just strikes the right balance. Thank you Ms. Sierra. I realized there was a gloss that I um, forgot, which is um, the power, I presume now, rests collectively with the board. We can delegate the power. We can also rescind it at any time. And the delegation of authority says that explicitly, that this lasts for a year unless the board decides to revoke it or rescind it um, yeah. or probably change it in some way. Uh, Mr. Thompson, did I see a hand or were you? Yes. OK, please. Um... Yeah, so I think we have, we've appointed an executive director and, and the executive director needs to be able to make decisions in order to run the agency and, and get it up and running. I think there's a balance to be struck with our role as the board in partnering with that person to create the culture of this new agency that did not exist prior to earlier this year. And that that is for a handful of the most senior positions. I, I think that includes our concurrence with those hiring decisions, so that we have a a role and a hand in selecting the most senior leaders of of the organization. Um, you know, I think different folks can see this in in different ways. I think of that as akin to, um, and obviously, government and a corporate environment are not the same. But in a corporate environment, typically the board elects the officers. Of, of of the corporation. So th that authority is not typically delegated to the CEO or in this case, the executive director. Um, given that we are new, we're starting off uh, with a pretty clean slate. I think it is, it's a, it is appropriate and necessary for us collectively as the board to have concurrence in, like I said, a handful of the most senior, uh, senior roles uh, that are hired for the agency. There may be some modest trade off in speed uh, with those, you know, if it's three to five of the most senior roles. Um, but I think that that trade off is worthwhile. Um, and and I, I, you know, as I as we've witnessed the hiring process unfold, um, 
it strikes me that would not unduly burden the process, which is not um, would not be super fast, but for that uh, uh, additional concurrence. Um, so, given that we are meeting on a regular basis, I think we can uh, all collectively uh, participate in that process and, and balance the, the need for speed um, while also delegating the authorities as described um, beyond that uh, appropriately to allow the executive director to make to make those decisions. So in my view, it's hard. It's a hard balance to strike because we don't have an organizational chart. We don't have a structure. So it's hard to enumerate what those positions might be. Um, in my mind, they are things like the general counsel or the head of head of enforcement or a chief technologist, if those positions are to exist in the future, which we'll see. Um, but those are the kind of positions that I think of as the most senior who would play a very strong role in building the culture of this organization. And I think it's appropriate for the board to have visibility and concurrence prior to their appointment. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Um, further comments from board members? Yeah. I um, yeah, I just want to add that, uh, you know, I think I really agree on we have a role in, in helping build the culture, uh, but I think I fall on the, the other side of, you know, I think getting advice, communicating with the executive director without tying uh, his hands is kind of where I, I lie on the that, that calculus uh, personally. And, you know, I think the statute spells out the two positions that uh, that, you know, the voters felt that the board should to consider. So I think we're keeping it limited to that and, uh, you know, giving, um, you know, getting that advice, but not having to involve ourselves in every single decision, um, even for those positions, uh, is, is kind of where I, I land on the balance. Thank you, Mr. Lay. Um, Ms. Hurtado, have we lost Ms. Sierra again? I No, I'm here. I, no, I'm here. And I've also I'm called here. in also in case. All right, Ms. Sierra, could you please mute your computer and and uh, just speak again uh, so we know if we can hear you on the phone? Oh. Ms. Sierra, I've just unmuted your phone line so you can go ahead and speak now. Yes, okay. I'm just going I'm, I'm just going to have you called in. That's all. Because this is creating issues okay. okay. on the phone. All right. Thank you, Ms. Yaron. Thank you for your patience. Um, I know thank it's you. when the tech is not um, cooperating perfectly. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so uh, as we as we lost you for a moment, um, I'm not sure how much you heard. Um, did you hear Mr. Tom? I heard Mr. Lay's comments. I did hear most of it um, to the very oh, end, I believe. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, then, then you are then you're you're caught up. Um, thank you, everyone, for um, the comments so far. My um, my own view is uh, I certainly hear and uh, support that the board uh, must be attentive to its responsibility and how it delegates its authority. Uh, I also uh, think that this um, delegation strikes the right balance. Um, uh, I've been <laughs> immersed in day to day, um, and so I'm less sanguine about the lack of efficiency um, if we did try to come up with some generalized limitation. I also don't really know um, how to formulate that, um, and it would need to be a bright line because um, uh, it has to be absolutely clear. Um, I hear Mr. Thompson about the fact that we don't have some of these positions defined um, yet, so which makes it we can't like name them um, in a carve out. I am not as, I'm not concerned about that um, because we can again rescind, amend, revoke this delegation of authority at any time. And so my personal view would be that we move forward with this delegation of authority. Um, and uh, we uh, work with the executive director, uh, and if we need to reconsider, uh, we can reconsider. So that is where I am at this point in the conversation. I appreciate everyone's thoughts. Um, are there further board comments before we ask for public comment? Yes, Mr. Thompson. 
Can I, I would make a suggestion which hopefully we could drive towards some sort of consensus on on this topic. The only of the of the positions I described, the only one that we are currently advertising is the general counsel. Um, so if we needed to modify, I, I I think if we had a little bit more time to work on this, we could probably arrive at a. I, I would like to think we could arrive at a solution that that satisfied everyone. In the interim, uh, to give us a little bit more time, we could just add the general counsel to the to the carve out. That's the only one that's operative at the at the moment, um, and perhaps have a final year long delegation at our next meeting. That would be my my suggestion on a path forward. Uh, thank you, Mr. Thompson. Uh, what what precisely would you carve out um, in terms of how far the authority extends? So the position has been posted. Um, there will be a process of considering applications. So I'm just trying to get at what at what point would the carve out arise in terms of when? when at, does at what point happen? in the process, or yeah. or how would you word the delegation? Uh, when would the board, when would the board need to um, exercise its authority collectively? At what point in the process? I'm I'm open on that. I mean, as as I was conceiving of it, um, if the executive director had a candidate that he wanted to extend an offer to, he could say, I, I've identified the final candidate. I want to extend an offer to person X. Do you concur? Um, and we could look at person X's qualifications and concur. Um, that that is that's one conception. It is not it's not my opinion that we should be interviewing uh, and down selecting. Uh, it should be concurrence with the with the selection made by the executive director. That's my my thinking. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Um, additional comments. I just I just wanted to highlight that I I'm of the mind of. Um, you know the, the ideas that Mr. Thompson has expressed. So I will also agree. Um, you know, I, I will also hope that we can find a way to have unanimous um, consent around um, the delegation, um, because it will signal a strong support from the, for the director, which I believe we we uh, have, and uh, it would be preferable um, for me to be able to vote to um, approve the delegation. So perhaps and the suggestion that Mr. Thompson just brought up, which will be including in this carve out, not only the chief privacy auditor, but also the general counsel for now, and then giving us some time to uh, draft um, a more precise list once we understand who are the persons who are gonna be the um, leaders um, at the agency um, that will put us in a position where we can all together demonstrate our support from the executive director by approving this delegation today unanimously. Um, thank you, uh, Ms. De La Torre. Um, I do remain concerned about defining and process speed and again, point out that the delegation of authority lasts as long as we would like it to last if we decide to revoke it. Um, are there other comments from the board? Any further thoughts? Um, from well, I have a thought. Today? I mean, I, I appreciate, you know, the, the attempts to, you know, get um, consensus. You know, why don't we just make this uh, maybe a future agenda item of like revisiting this delegation at the next meeting when we have had time to think through potential uh, you know carve outs but you know for me I, I personally don't think my, my mind will change on this um you know, at next meeting but um I, I yeah, it's just also uncertain right now hard to get a, a good handle but uh yeah I'll just leave it at that thank you mr lay that would also give me time to formulate a variety of potentials for us to talk about. Um, any other comments from the board? The only, the only comment I would add is, to me, this is, it's, 
I would have this view regardless of who the executive is. Um, I, and I think that should be made clear um, that it's it's a it's a structural and process question to me, not about. Uh, I mean, I think it is it's governance of the board to board management governance approach, not specific to any individuals, be it the five of us or be it um, the executive director or any of, uh, and any other executive director. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. I think that is a very important um, point to highlight. Um, absolutely. Um, this right. is really about how we want to organize the, the, the structure. From that point, I'm not, sure, right? I'm not sure if we need to name the director in the delegation. Is that mandatory to name the director or can it just be a delegation on the executive director, whomever that might be? Uh, Mr. Bruder, I... Uh, I'm not quite following the question, sorry. As drafted currently, the delegation is on the agency's executive director as consultani. For my comments, and I think Mr. Thompson expressed the same opinion, this is our um, uh, hesitance has nothing to do with who is the specific um, director, um, but just with institutionally how we function as a board. Will it be appropriate to draft this delegation without including the name of the executive oh, director? Yes, Does the yes, delegation yes. have to have the name? No, no, no. Uh, delegate to the title, so you, you can definitely remove the name. Yeah, the delegation I was operating under just said the chairperson, I think. I could be wrong, but we just have to designate the role, right? That's correct. That makes okay. really sense to me. Okay. Um, all right. Um, so uh, I will. Uh, what I've heard, um, I've heard, a, I've heard uh, so far, um, a, a sense from some board members that the delegation is drafted um, is appropriate and strikes the right balance. Um, a sense from other board members that. Um, there should be some provision uh, to potentially carve out certain positions, a recognition that we have a limited number of specific positions at this moment, as well as um, a couple of ideas. Um, one was to include, to carve out, excuse me, Mr. Thompson, the general counsel. Um, one was to go ahead with this delegation and revisit it at the next meeting uh, from Mr. Lay, which um, please, Mr. Lay, forgive me and tell me if I'm wrong, if I'm interpreting this incorrectly. But I think that was um, to make clear the fact that the board can always reconsider the delegation and it would have to take the responsibility to, to do that. Um, and um, uh, I believe that's, and there's the ministerial issue of whether to put Mr. Sultani's name or the title, um, and um, we can put the title. Um, any other or thoughts or anything that I missed from the conversation? All right. Um, uh, I would like to ask for public comment at this time. There are no commenters at this time. Thank you, Ms. Hurtado. Uh, all right, um, I uh, certainly appreciate um, everybody's careful thoughts on this. Um, I do think that um, uh, uh, it is, we should be very clear that we are considering process here, um, that we uh, support um, our executive director and that we're trying to think through the right way to do this. Um, I propose, um, to begin, um, I propose that um, we have a motion to 
um, uh, adopt the delegation of authority as drafted with the removal of the executive director's name from the delegation of authority and agree that we will reconsider it in our next meeting. Um, we could also consider carving out the general counsel position that Mr. Uh, Thompson suggested. Um, I suggest that we start with the, the simpler version, um, given that we will be considering it again on November 15th. Um, but now that I've formulated a motion, um, I will again ask for any comment. Mr. Thompson. What does revisiting it at our next meeting look like? Um, so it will not have, as currently constructed, it will not have expired, nor will it have additional carve outs. So we would agendize discussing a delegation of authority that has 11 months yet to run on it um, for potential modification, but if no modification is made, it would continue as as constructed. Yeah, um, correct. It would be a, it would be an opportunity for us to formally um, discuss it and see if we want to create carve outs or do um, make other changes to it. Um, would it we do or we can continue on our way? Yeah. Would it mechanically make any difference if the duration of the proposal lasted until the next meeting then? Uh, then I, I am not fond of that. Um, I was operating under that. And um, I, again, I don't see a major distinction um, if we're going to talk about it anyway. And uh, I just, I think I, I prefer to have a date certain um, that I know about unless we decide to change it. That is my own view. Any other comments? I guess I'm just, I'm looking for something I feel good about voting for. Um, so that, hence the reason for my exploration of those alternatives. Ms. Sierra, I am sorry, I'm just going to check in and see if you're still here. I am, yes. Okay. Uh, any other thoughts? Um, I, I want to specifically note that Mr. Thompson did bring in a, another option. Mr. Lay? Yeah, my, my preference would be, yeah, to, to not have it time time limited. Um, we, we will discuss it and then hopefully um, we'll have a better idea of uh, what particular, what that looks like, what those carve outs could look like uh, in, in discussion. Maybe folks could bring that, um, yeah, bring that up and then we could have a full discussion around yeah, what the modified carve outs could look like. And then uh, having that fallback just being the default is that we'll continue the delegation if we don't, yeah, we don't change it at the next meeting. Um, thank you, Mr. Lay. Any further this comments? This is Angela. Yes, please go ahead, um, Ms. Sierra. Yeah, so yeah, this, I'm looking at this language. It does, you know, I guess to keep, as you have pointed out, this phrase, otherwise rescinded or amended by the board. And since we are committing to having it on the agenda next time, it effectively will you know, give the whole board an opportunity to rethink this, even if we approve this today, right? So, in effect, there um, we will. There's really nothing that's that's going to limit us um, because it says one year. Um, thank you, Miss Sierra. That's the way I'm looking at this. Excuse me. Thank you, Miss Sierra. All right, um, so uh, I will 
reformulate or repeat the motion, which is uh, to adopt the delegation of authority that we have before us, removing the um, executive director's name and agreeing that we will revisit the delegation of authority in our, no in our next meeting um, in, and uh, uh, to, for further discussion. Mr. Bruder, is that a proper form? Yes. Thank you. Um, do I have a motion? I, I so move. Thank you, Mr. Lay. Do I have a second? This is Angela. I will second. Thank you, Ms. Sierra. Ms. Hurtado, would you please perform the roll call vote? Ms. De La Torre. For the reasons I stated, I regretfully have to vote against this resolution. Mr. Lay. Aye. Ms. Sierra. Aye. Mr. Thompson. I also am going to have to. I'm also going to have to vote vote against it. Um, unfortunately, it's time limited as constructed. It could be time limited in a different way, but we're declining to do that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and vote now. Ms. Urban, uh, aye. The vote is three to two. Three in favor. Thank you, Ms. Hurtado. The motion carries. I will be certain to put this on the agenda for our next meeting. I have collected um, the general counsel carve out um, time limitations um, and the sort of the, the, the general thinking about um, Mr. Thompson would executive positions be a, a fair character shorthand um, as, as, as a, a potential. Um, I just want to be sure I'm jotting down those yeah. things. So I can give you a clarification. Mm, sure. The time I'm not I was not interested in a short duration as a concept. My notion was a short duration to get us to the next meeting. So beyond a a bridge to the next meeting, I was not suggesting a time limitation as a longer term fix. So I would okay. remove that as an option. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. All right, thanks very much for your careful consideration of this agenda item. Uh, we will now move to agenda item number 13. Um, lucky number 13. Um, thank you all for sticking with us um, through 12 agenda items today to all the board members and the public. Uh, I, agenda item number 13 is notice to the Attorney General to assume rulemaking authority. Um, as a, again, a bit of background, we initially discussed um, this topic in our June 14th meeting. Um, uh, this relates to um, section 1798.19940B of the Civil Code, which is the portion of the California Consumer Privacy Act that's amended by the CPRA. It provides that authority for rulemaking will transfer from the Attorney General who has held it, and under that authority, the Attorney General created the existing regulations under the CCPA to the California Privacy Protection Agency six months after we, as the agency, give notice to the Attorney General that we are prepared to begin rulemaking. As you may recall, as we discussed it on June 14th, the, um, the CPRA, as originally drafted, had some conflicting provisions as to whether that um, authority would transfer on the later of July 1st, 2021, or six months after we as the agency give notice, or the earlier. The um, legislature passed, the governor signed, and the Secretary of State filed on October 5th, AB 694, which amended um, the CPRA uh, to remove that inconsistency. Um, so it is clear that authority transfers on or after the later of July 1st, 2021, or six within six months of the agency providing the
the Attorney General with notice. Um, so we do we, the clarity, there, there isn't a lack of clarity. Uh, we are past July 1st. So uh, in order for rulemaking authority to transfer to the agency, we need to give notice to the Attorney General. Um, and six months later, authority uh, will transfer um, to the agency under the law. Um, I propose that um, we uh, approve um, notice to the Attorney General. Um, my understanding from counsel is it would be appropriate for the Executive Director to send a letter to the AG um, uh, should we approve. Um, and then if, for example, we approved and the Executive Director managed to uh, notify the Attorney General by tomorrow, uh, we would gain authority on April 19th. Um, and so I um, strongly recommend that we uh, approve uh, the executive director's action here um, because um, of our rulemaking um, dates. Any comments or questions from the board members? Yes, Ms. De La Torre. I just quickly wanted to highlight that I was the person who brought up um, in the initial meeting that we might not be ready at the time. I uh, absolutely see the recommendation that Mr. Mrs. Irvin has provided to the board as the appropriate recommendation at this time, and I'm, I'm ready to vote to approve um, the sending of the um, letter to the Attorney General at the time that the Executive Director considers appropriate. Thank you, Ms. Delatore. Um, anyone else? Ms. Sierra, since I can't see you, I apologize. I don't mean to put you on the spot, just so no, you know. No, no, no. I, and, and I apologize that I'm having this connection problem, but no, I'm, I'm of agreement as well. I think um, very much support um, the, um, our, our providing to that um, authority and then notice um, to the Attorney General now. Thank you, Ms. Sierra. Thank you, Ms. Sierra. Uh, for any further comments from the board? Sorry, just a clarification because I heard it described both ways. Is the the action that we're taking that the executive director send the notification at the time the executive director deems appropriate, or are we directing the executive director to do it now? Um, Ms. De La Torre said when the executive director deems appropriate, um, we could say reasonably soon or as soon as possible. I wouldn't want to say tomorrow just in case I'm not anticipating some little thing that got in the way. Um, I think we could also give the executive director a sense that we would like this done as soon as possible. Um, there, there are a couple of different ways we could go with that. Um, Ms. De La Torre? Yeah, from my point of view, I think that we should just leave it to the discretion of the executive director. He has a lot of things on his plate to do. <laughs> and so, uh, and I'm sure that he will do this in a way that's expeditious. Uh, so I, I, don't, I don't see the need to include any other constraints. Thank you, Ms. Taylor Troy. All right, um, uh, is there any public comment? There is no public comment at this time. Thank you very much, Ms. Hurtado. May I have a motion to approve giving notice to the Attorney General that the California Privacy Protection Agency is prepared to begin rulemaking pursuant to section 1798.199.40, subsection B of the Civil Code? I so move. Thank you, Ms. De La Torre. May I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Lay. I have a motion and a second. Ms. Uh, Hurtado, would you please perform the roll call vote? Ms. De La Torre? Aye. Mr. Lay? Aye. Ms. Sierra? Aye. Mr. Thompson? Aye. 
Ms. Urban? Aye. The vote is five to zero. Thank you, Ms. Hurtado. The motion carries five to zero. Um, I will inform the executive director of our vote um, and ask um, him to report in the next meeting um, uh, when the notice was sent. Thank you all very much um, for your efficient discussion of, of this important issue. We now move to agenda item 14, public comments on items not on the agenda. Um, in this item, we invite public comment, um, including on items not on the agenda. Before we proceed with public comment, please note that the only action the board can take is to listen to comments and consider whether it will discuss the topic at a future meeting. No other action can be taken on the item at this meeting. Though this may seem at times like board members are not being responsive, following these guidelines is critical to ensure that the rules of the Bagley-Keen Open Meeting Act are followed and to avoid compromising either the commenter's goals or the board's mission. Um, so uh, thank you for attending to that. Um, and I will ask uh, Ms. Hurtado, um, do we have uh, public comment? I'm going to give them just a few more minutes, but at this time there is no public comment. Okay, thank you, Ms. Hurtado. Just let us know um, when you're ready. All right, still, still no public comment, Ms. Hurtado? At this time, there are no requests for public comment. Thank you very much, Ms. Hurtado. Um, we'll now move to agenda item number 15, uh, which is our opportunity to discuss future agenda items. Uh, I have uh, uh, at least a couple um, uh, on my list. Uh, one is uh, reports from our subcommittees, including our rulemaking subcommittees. Um, second is um, the delegation of authority. Uh, do any board members have additional agenda items for the next board meeting? Yes, Ms. De La Torre. I'm not sure if it's appropriate to mention this here. It's not an agenda item, but a suggestion as we move into a situation where we have multiple uh, meetings potentially within a month. Perhaps we want to stagger those agenda items so that we have a meeting that's more dedicated to rulemaking. I think there is a lot of interest in the topic, in that topic, and another meeting that is more dedicated to internal affairs of the um, of the agency, and then just kind of keep rotating that that way if possible. 
I understand that we also have to identify days for the public hearings, et cetera, but just a suggestion. Thank you. So the suggestion is a sort of an organization of agenda items rather than any specific agenda item. And Absolutely. The, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, um, we haven't been able to do that yet because, again, of the building the plane and flying the plane, um, but um, it's a helpful suggestion. Thank you. Um, any other um, uh, items or comments on agenda from the board? I, um, I I don't know if it fits better with one of the rules subcommittees, but I'd, I'd like more just a, maybe a report or discussion around kind of the, the timelines for all of this, right? I think that's kind of looming. Um, we, we, we touched on it a little bit today with the emergency rulemaking um, versus other options, but um, I don't know who would be the best report on that. Maybe is it the executive director after talking to the subcommittee? But um, yeah, just just so we can get some certainty around, yeah, what we're expecting for our timeline. Thank you, Mr. Lay. Uh, my own my own sense was that was with the process subcommittee, but I want to give Mr. Thompson and Mrs. Excuse me, Ms. De La Torre, the ability to confirm or not, um, and so we can uh, locate it with someone. All right, I. We um, can confirm that we're generally looking into the timeline. The challenge is that uh, we do not have all the information. We do not know, for example, when the other subcommittees are going to be ready to present their version of the rules for approval by the board, etc. Uh, we will continue to work closely with the executive director, and I think it will be appropriate for the executive director at some point to kind of uh, help us um, by providing uh, a a timeline as um, he is going to have all of the pieces of information that are necessary for that. Thank you, Ms. Dillis Roy. Yeah, and, and to that point, it'd be, it'd be helpful just to have, you know, uh, just general, if we have timelines, like goals, you know, under different scenarios for, for example, when the rulemaking committee needs to get all of these things done by, so we have something to shoot for. Thank you, Mr. Lay. One thing that Mr. Thompson and I can confirm uh, from our conversations with the um, lead uh, from the AG that is helping us with the requirements is that if if we're not following the emergency process, if we're following the regular process, our rules will have to be approved by the um, uh, Office of Administrative Law within one year of the day that we provide notice um, that we are issuing rules. So that, that kind of gives you some sense of the maximum under the law. Once um, the subcommittees report out on their um, rules and the um, uh, statement of reasons, et cetera, and we get to uh, an approval of those by the board um, and publication, the, the maximum time is, is one year from there. Uh, so, in my notes, I have a request for a report of and discussion of potential timelines. Um, and I propose that um, the process subcommittee has heard the request and that I will double check with the executive director um, to work with the process subcommittee. Um, and they can work out who should report, if that sounds good. Okay. Um, any other uh, agenda items? Um, okay, thank you. I do, um, we do have a, a few carryovers, um, you know, potentially um, some uh, trainings or information, um, which um, anyone's welcome to um, bring up. I just wanted you to know I haven't forgotten them. Uh, and uh, I would like to ask if there's any public comment. Uh, there are no requests at this time. Thank you, Ms. Hurtado. Um, in that case, uh, our final agenda item is number 16. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I just wanted to confirm that uh, for the November um, 
uh, meeting now that there's an ED, there will be an ED update. We'd be happy to do kind oh. of a... My, my, um, my apologies, Mr. Sultani. That was actually on my list. And I remembered to mention it when I gave my update and I forgot to add it here. Yes, um, the chairperson's update will be replaced by an ED update. Thank you. I hope to provide insights as to proposed uh, strat strategic vision and budget priorities and org chart at that point. Not necessarily details, but at least high level strategy for the board to review. Thank you, Mr. Sultani. Um, Given that I flubbed that a little bit, again, my apologies. I will again uh, ask if there's any public comment since we have another item. There are no public comments at this time. Thank you, Ms. Ricardo. Um, all right. Uh, given that, we will move on to our final agenda item, number 16, which is adjournment. I would like to thank everyone of uh, the board members, all of the staff involved in putting this meeting together. Uh, there's a lot of work behind the scenes. And the members of the public who've joined us today for their um, contributions uh, to the meeting and attention to the board's work. May I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Uh, I'll. I'll make the motion. Thank you, Mr. Lay. I have a motion. May I have a second? Second. second. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. I have a motion to adjourn the meeting and a second. Ms. Hurtado, would you please perform the roll call vote? Ms. De La Torre? Aye. Mr. Lay? Aye. Ms. Sierra? Aye. Mr. Thompson? Aye. Ms. Urban? Aye. The vote is five to zero. Thank you, Ms. Hurtado. The motion has been approved by a vote of five to zero. This meeting of the California Privacy Protection Agency Board is now adjourned. Thank you all very much. <laughs>